Hello, it's me again, and I'm going to create a video on how I landed work in a post-secondary institution and particularly a teaching role in my mid-20s. So I'll start with a bit of my background. Um, I have always been interested in helping others in a teaching capacity. Um, I can even remember as a child, I made lesson plans for my friends on how to ride their bike, and I made different um, videos that back at the time we had like a big video recorder of myself teaching how to cook. Like I was always interested in helping others by educating them. You know, early on in my educational journey, I realized that um, I wasn't a, a big fan of the idea of teaching in high school or grade school at all. Um, I didn't really have a great experience in grade school and I think it's because the education system didn't really support people like myself who were quite creative and um, thought out outside of the box and really liked a level of autonomy. Um, I found that grade school was quite structured and you kind of had to stick to the rules and you had to learn what was orchestrated by the instructor. So I kind of I kind of wasn't sure like what does teaching look like outside of teaching in a high school setting. Um, so I kind of put that idea to the back burner and I ended up going and getting uh, a diploma or in the States it's called an associate's degree in design because I was quite creative and, and my idea was that I would graduate and not necessarily be a designer but maybe I could teach design and you know I so soon realized that it's very hard to teach design without you know a higher level of education. Um, but, you know, I discovered um, visual training, which was a type of role within retail where you could train uh, merchandisers on how to set up and strategically plan stores. And I ended up landing a more senior merchandising, visual merchandising role where I could train other um, new merchandisers. And that really confirmed for me that that was more interesting than actually doing the merchandising work. So I kind of thought, well, what if I go back to school? I ended up working in a couple of different jobs, like in, in other design areas, like interior design and um, whatnot. But I kind of decided, OK, I'll go back. I'll go back to school. So I got another degree in a different type of design. And my whole objective with there was to eventually work in towards being a design and teacher or instructor, but still not really sure what context that um, related to. Like, I wasn't sure where I could teach. Like, could I teach in a college if I got a bachelor's degree? Um, it wasn't quite clear. But what was clear is that even though I like teaching, I didn't really have a lot of skills, like formal training to build skills in that area. So two things that I did in my that second undergrad or that second program was I ended up searching or doing an audit around the university that I went to school at for any type of helping role. So like peer to peer helping role. And there were a lot. So I ended up landing landing a kind of a peer-to-peer -peer job in a student service area. And that was amazing because I was able to work one-on-one -on -one with students um, at least a few times a week and then also deliver workshops. Um, but I learned very on that I was quite uncomfortable doing workshops and it, I, was, I was quite nervous and I just felt like I didn't know how to deliver workshops effectively. So I ended up doing another audit around campus and off of campus of what were some different skills that I could develop and training. And so I ended up getting certified as a coach. I did a program because I found coaching skills were relevant to some of the teaching skills and ended up taking some adult education classes on how to be a better adult facilitator. And I did this all alongside my degree. There were a lot of time they were just like weekend workshop classes or seminars and you could get a little certificate. And I found that to be very helpful. Um, in building a knowledge about best practices and even theory sometimes they talked about to help anchor my understanding of um, sound facilitation. While kind of halfway into that degree, I kind of discovered, well, you know what, I could potentially teach in a university um, or a college, but what would it take in order to land that type of job? And what was clear to me is that most of people um, irrespective if they were professors, I'm just talking about instructors in university. Um, they had an advanced degree, and in many cases they had terminal degrees. And a terminal degree is like the highest degree in your field, and many fields it's a PhD. And when I looked around Canada, there wasn't really a PhD in my field, but there was a master's that was considered a terminal degree. 
So I was starting to think a little bit about like, well, what would it take to get into a master's, even though I was only in my second year? And I was still keeping my options open. Like it wasn't like, oh, I need to do the master's and be a teacher or I, in order to be happy. It was just kind of this preferred vision that I had and I really want to work towards and whatever came along the way came. And if I didn't like it, I would kind of redirect my path. So I still quite open minded. So what I discovered about grad school is I needed to have work experience and I didn't really want to go do that degree, bachelor's degree, and then do work experience and go and do master's. So I started to look at internships within that bachelor's degree that I was in. And I ended up finding a few different summer internships. One was kind of a volunteer. Um, I was a volunteer, essentially. It was unpaid work. But I was able to build a project, a design project, that I could add to my portfolio of work, which was really useful. So that was amazing. And then I ended up actually finding that my program, I could do two practicums. Um, and most people never knew that you could do a practicum, but I discovered I could. I needed a supervisor. So I started to network with my supervisors or professors in university, and I sort of just got, it, got to know them. Like I kind of set up meetings or conversations to learn about how they got into their job and ask about their area of research and interest. And I built a little bit of a relationship, and, and it was kind of a good way to see if they were open to supporting me in my, uh, my practicums. And it was really important because I needed to have some evidence that I could do work. So I needed to have design deliverables I had done to add to my portfolio so that I could add that to my master's of um, program that I was going to apply to. So kind of all that being said, I ended up trying to figure out, well, if I do a master's, well, where, what would be the criteria by which deciding if it was a good program for me um, because I ended up applying to multiple programs and some were actually overseas and quite um, well-known programs in my area and I ended up getting accepted into a lot of these programs but I still couldn't figure out well how will I decide and again I thought back to well what was my whole intention and it was to teach so what I ended up doing was kind of dissecting a little bit deeper into like what what was involved in the programs beyond just um, going to classes and doing a thesis. And I discovered that actually the school I was already at that had a master's um, uh, offered every semester TA positions or teaching assistantships for different courses. And in the last year of my program, I could actually teach a class or a course as a principal instructor. So right away, that was a really big selling feature for me. And um, the other programs didn't really offer that. So it helped make my decision easier. And I was able to also get financial aid, which was also important for me because I didn't want to go into a lot of debt. One thing led to another. I ended up applying and, you know, quite fortunately, I ended up getting accepted even without having to take off a few years to work. Again, because I had those internships and um, kind of a design portfolio under my belt. While I was starting my master's, right away I started being a teaching assistant and I loved being a teaching assistant because it was such a unique experience of having, being kind of in a position to help students and guide them and give them feedback and particularly in my area where there was studio based work which was all projects that students were doing but also I was kind of like job shadowing because I wasn't didn't have all this responsibility where I was having to mark assignments and make final decisions for the class and kind of run the show so being a teaching assistant was really valuable and just a rich life experience and I was able to do that for most semesters throughout my program. I also looked into different programs that would help me kind of buffer my skill set. So I discovered that graduate students could take part in a teaching and learning program and a teaching and learning course. Like there was a separate course I could do over a term, which was non-credit, but also this program where if I attended all these workshops and whatever, I could get a certificate. And I thought this, this was so genius because I could kind of get more knowledge about good practice. Um, so like how to design a learning plan or a lesson plan and how to facilitate an engaging classroom and how to inject experiential learning into the classroom and how to inject reflection for students and how to um, be a mentor for students, like all these different um, approaches to pedagogy. So I was able to kind of do that simultaneously while being a TA and eventually I was able to land or by land, they had offered every master's students one course that they could teach, and it was a first-year course. I didn't really know what projects to 
implement and I didn't really know um, how to be a good instructor in this first year course. So what was really crucial is I started to have conversations with all the other master students that had taught that course before and then other professors who had taught it and I just accumulated information. Well, what projects were they were they putting in the class and how were they evaluating them and what were some of the challenges that students were running into? And I think that really helped give me a toolkit that I was able to kind of bring into my first course. The next challenge for me was like, okay, so I was going to teach just like every other master student, but or master student, but what was I going to do to retain that job when I knew that most graduate students didn't really get that opportunity again? So what I discovered was I needed to talk to my different like professors and let them know that I was interested in teaching beyond um, you know, the completion of that one course. And so I basically went around to figure out who was in charge of hiring and I kind of talked to them and I just said, you know, this is what I'm capable of. Here's some of the student work. You know, you know what, would it, what would it take in order for me to land a position in the department? And, you know, I wasn't interested in being a professor. I was interested in just teaching kind of one-off courses here and there. They basically told me there has to be an opportunity, first of all. If there's no opportunity, then it's hard to kind of give you an opportunity. Um, but you also kind of have to build a teaching portfolio. So I went to other workshops to build a dossier and teaching portfolio. And I ended up building one and giving it to the chair in the department. Eventually, he ended up really appreciating the, the gesture I had made which was to offer him a view of my work that I had done with kind of the students the projects that I had designed and and some of the reflections from the students I had put into this teaching portfolio and he just basically said you know if there's an opening I'll let you know but lo and behold there was an instructor who was going to be moving um, and she was teaching as part of a co um, she was a co-teacher meaning there was a course that there was two instructors and so they ended up actually offering me that position alongside another one. So what was really important is that I planted those seeds of interest early on before the, before the term or, and before hiring took place. Um, and what I also discovered is that in my university that they ended up, te they end up teaching, the teachers end up teaching similar courses every year. Um, and they don't really do a call for new teachers too often. So I asked to be on a mailing list where they sent out a form every December to see who, who was interested in teaching what courses. And because I'm on that mailing list every year, I'm able to kind of say, hey, I'm interested in still teaching in the department because as a sessional instructor, you're a contract worker. And, you know, for the last five or six years, I've been able to continue to teach, which has been, you know, obviously a blessing. Um, and you, you're able to establish yourself in a department when you kind of teach for more than a couple of years. You know, there's been a lot of different um, proactive gestures that I've done in order to get to that point. But I was able to do it in my mid-20s to land that opportunity. Hopefully that was helpful, gave you some inspiration or some ideas of how you might be able to do something similar. Um, if you have any questions, let me know below. Um, if you subscribe, I'll probably create similar videos of how to land professional work. Also. Um, I'm posting more and more about my, my career or education path within Western Governors University because I'm taking an accelerated master's degree as my second master's. And so you're more than welcome to subscribe to know about how that journey is taking place. Um, the, the hope is to get it done within six months and I'm about one month in right now. Hopefully we'll see you around and thanks for listening.